Today I'm going to show you how we can extend our sample orders API um, to add conditional logic to handle multiple shipping companies. If you haven't signed up for a trial of API Connect, you can find us in the AWS Marketplace where you can sign up for a trial. And then the guided tour will take you through how to import the sample API and get to the starting point that I'm at today. So first of all, I'm going to go into develop APIs and products. And you see here that we've got the sample API already imported and ready to use. We'll go into there and show you this is exactly the same as we've got. Then as we're going to create a new, a new version and add some more logic, we'll create a new version of the API. We'll cut this version two. So this will take a copy of the API so that we're ready to start from the point we left off in the sample. So to add this additional logic, I'm going to put in a switch prior to we call the Lambda function. So in this case, I'm going to look at message.body.shipper and we want the logic to stay the same if the shipper is UPS. And we're going to add another shipper to this. So we're going to say the second option is if the shipper is Royal Mail. So now we can see we've got the, the logic in the flow and we're going to drag in this existing map and Lambda function call into the first step. So if it's UPS, it works as it did before with no change. And then for the Royal Mail option to get things working and prove things before we add the calls out to the backend API, I'm going to use the new message template policy to provide a mock example of what, what this looks like. So what I've done is I've taken the existing logic from the API, um, the existing output, then I've gone over to the Royal Mail developer portal and had a look at what I'm going to get back from their server tracking, a, uh, tracking API. I'm going to call the one for a single mail piece. And I can see down here the fields that I'm going to get back. So I've pulled out a few of these that I would want to include. Um, so I've got the event code um, and the status description. And I think further down, there's a expected delivery date. Yeah, estimated delivery. So I've pulled out those to make sure that I know I can get those from the API when I build it properly. And then I've dropped those into this, this template alongside the existing um, output that I've got. For some of the things that I want to be dynamic, I've used this handlebar syntax to specify the order number. So the order number gets passed through. And then we've got the actual reference from the tracking in there. So item reference number was forwarded to the delivery office. And I've also done the same for where the reference is in the output as well. So let's save this and then to, and they put this online, publish it to the gateway. Oh, what have I got here? Uh, missing field, ah, I didn't set the content type. So I need to go down here and select the content type to be JSON. And now let's try putting it online again. There we go, so that's online and I should be able to test it in the test tool. Let's give it an order number and click send. So here we see working as expected. And we can have a look at the trace to see, ah, so this has only gone through the first thing. We don't see the switch showing up in the, in the output, which suggests that we've got some sort of a problem here. So let's have a look at the advanced detail in the trace. We see here, this is a way to find out all the details of what's going on with the API that's being executed. So you've got the details of the API, the request, org and environment, API name, so we've got sample order API. Ah, version, that's still saying 1.0.0. So this means that it's hit the version one of the API rather than version two. Now this is because we've got two versions published and because we're only using one application, it's subscribed to them both. So it, you can't guarantee that you'll get the one that you're expecting back. So in a normal situation, you'd have different applications subscribe to different versions. But in this case, I'm going to, I've only got one application for the sandbox. So I'm going to just retire the version one so that we can then go back into the version two that we're trying to test and hit that one with the test tool. So put in our order number and click send. And there we see we've got the output. Let's just check it's hitting the right version. Yes, it's going through the switch. We see that. So because the original backend doesn't support 
the other tracking company, I need to now update the target URL so that we've got our development version so that we actually get some orders with Royal Mail shipping. So let's save that with that new property and then try testing it again with an order number of 123. This one's gone through the UPS route. Let's try again as it randomly returns a different tracking at the minute. So hopefully if I hit it enough times, we'll get the package with Royal Mail. There we go. So we see here we've got the different format response. We've got the item with a has been forwarded to the delivery office and it's being redirected. Now, if we have a look at the trace, we can see that's gone through those three as we expected before, and then it's gone straight to the message template for the output. If we want to dig in further, we can look at the full trace and all the error messages and the logs that we're getting from this, this API invocation. So hopefully that's shown you a little bit of something else that can be done with API Connect, adding some conditional logic. Obviously, the next step would be to start replacing that message template that we've got in the gateway policy with an actual call out to the Royal Mail shipping uh, tracking API, and then combine the data again in the same way as we did with the, the UPS example.